Welcome to Dice Tower Live. Ah, hello. I was just doing some light reading of the Evertel rules. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Uh, Z Garcia here. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be playing the solitaire version of Everdell. Everdell is a tableau building and worker placement game in which I am going to be gathering resources and then using those to build these cards in front of me. You're not going to get a great view of that, but we are going to show you the board now. Look at that smooth criminal. Um, so here's the board. Uh, in the solitaire game, I am going to be deploying my workers. I got, I got these little critters right here. I'm going to be sending them out to the different locations, and I am playing against the baddie represented by these rats here. He is going to be basically not really taking actions, more blocking my locations, my possible locations. And every time I build a card, he's going to roll a die and freely build a card. Uh, one of these eight because of the eight-sided die, each one corresponding to a number there. Uh, and so that's the general flow of the game. At the end of the game, I am going to count up the victory points on every, on every card I've uh, built, uh, the victory points from any coins I've gathered, and so forth, and see if I win. I do compare my score to his score and see how I do. All right, so that's the general idea. A couple of things before I get going here. The uh, version of this game you are looking at is what's called the collector's edition, I think, or collector's version, something like that. But it's largely the same that it would be if you get the, the, the retail edition. The main difference being that you would see in this play is the coins. These are metal coins. In the retail version of the game, they are cardboard uh, punch-out coins. But the rest of the bits and everything else should look the same. Uh, I forget if you get the little mice meeples here. That might also be just in this version. This one also comes with extra cards and things like that, but none of those are in play, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so uh, I think the easiest thing for us to do here is for me to jump pretty much right in and start playing. I'll narrate as I go so you understand what's going on, but other than that, and unless you have any questions, I think we're good to go. So, I have set up the board already. He begins blocking a couple of spots for me, and I give myself a hand of five cards. These cards are going to have either a critter or a building, a construction they call it. They have a power along the bottom, and they have a cost along the side. Uh, so, I will begin by sending out some workers here and getting some resources. So first I got to figure out what I want to do. I also have access to everything on the table as well in the meadow. Uh, every, every player would. Uh, so let me see if maybe there's something out there that I would like instead of what I'm holding. That's pretty good. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and send out my first worker out here to this spot. There are several worker placement spots along this trail on the board, as well as some that change from game to game out here, these forest locations. And uh, there are some uh, across the top as well that are just for straight up victory points if you have the required cards built up already. There is a spot down here that is unavailable until later on in the game, and there is one down here as well that lets me... Uh, trade cards for resources. So I'm going to send my first uh, little dude right there. I get two twigs for that and a card. So I'll take those two twigs and I will draw a card. I got a shopkeeper uh, who's pretty cool. All right. Then I am going to send down my other worker out here and he's going to get me two resin, which are these little crystals. And uh, that's it. Next up, I am going to build a card. I would like to build... Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, I am going to build this inn right here. It's going to cost... Let's take a look at it. Uh-huh. There we go. So it's going to cost me two twigs, one resin, it's an inn, a common construction. It has its own spot for a worker. And it says that I can play a critter or a construction from the metal, the center of the board there, for three fewer resources, anything. 
So I'm going to go ahead and play that in front of me. That's two twigs and one resin. I put that back. As soon as I do that, I replenish the meadow with a new card. And then every time I build a card, he builds a card. Uh, Rugwort. Rugwort. That's his name, the baddie. So I roll that. Six, four, five, six. He builds this. We put that aside somewhere for him with the type of card showing because that's the only thing that will matter. And then I reveal a new one. And then it's back to me. And I am going to, I have a single resin left. I don't have any workers left. Uh, there's nothing else I think I can do right now. And so I will do the third option for an action I have. So if you've been keeping score at home, it's send out a worker, play a card by spending the required resources. The third thing is an action called prepare for the next season, in which I'm going to, this is not something you can see, but I'll move it into the, the shot for a second. Come here. Oh no. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this is normally a 3D tree that I would build up on that stump over there. But um, here across the top, there would be, uh, these are the three times that you are going to change from one season to the next. So in spring, the very first season change, I'm going to get one more worker and I would trigger every card that has that symbol uh, as the uh, card type. After that, next time I, sw I switch from one season to the other one, I'm going to get another worker and I'm going to draw two meadow cards and then lastly I'll trigger those buildings again and get my last two workers. When I do this, by the way, I also retrieve the ones I've been using already. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I get one worker and I take these guys back. I would trigger those kinds of buildings. I don't have any. I've only got the in here and uh, that's it. When I do that in the solitaire game, the very next thing that the baddie does is switch from one season to the next himself. And when he do does that, some things are going to change. So uh, first thing we do is we check if he has enough colored cards to qualify for any of the four basic events up there. Uh, what are they called? Uh, yeah, four basic events. And so if he has, uh, you know, three of these kinds of cards or three of those and so on, he would take that event. He does not, so we're good. Next thing is we take his new worker, just like I got one, he gets one, and he is going to put it on the first card in the metal, keeping me from building that card. Uh, then he is going to, moving this little dude counterclockwise, he's going to block this card over here and open up that one. That's actually pretty good. I need those three berries. And that's it. No, and then we take this and we move it from the three twig location. He goes and blocks the two resin location. So there we go. Thankfully, you don't have to keep managing this unless you switch from one season to the next. So that's one thing I really like about it, that the solitaire mode is very hands-off, which is great. Da-da-da. Let me just double check. So someone is saying the rats, the little rats, and the larger D8 are collector's version. Okay, so there you go. Coins, rats, and this uh, eight-sided die. Ba, ba, ba. All right, everything looks good, so I'm going to keep on going. All right, so I've got my in here that's going to let me play a critter or a construction from the meadow for three fewer. And I also, the in here would let me play an innkeeper for free. I'm just looking at the meadow here, seeing if there's anything I really want. That's pretty good. So, all right, here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to send a worker out to the inn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to occupy that space. I am going to build the school right here. The school takes two twigs, two resin. Uh, the uh, inn there is going to decrease my cost by three, so I can just pay the resin I ended up with last time. And the school is a unique construction that says I'm going to get one victory point for each common critter in my city at the end of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to build this. I pay my one resin and uh, I am going to replenish the metal and he'll build. Four. So he gets that. I just arrange it again by the card type. I don't worry about anything else. And it's back to me. 
So it's time to build up some common critters then. That's the way to go. I can now use this ch building chain to deploy uh, the innkeeper. As I said, if we're going to, let's take a quick look here at the inn. The inn is a building, it's a, it's a common construction. Down here in the corner, and this is true for most buildings, let's see if I can give you a closer look at that. There we go. It'll show me a character, in this case it says innkeeper, and this lets me know that I can build the innkeeper without paying for him if I do it through owning the inn. Okay, so I would take one of these little things and I would put it on there and I would just build the uh, innkeeper. Upon doing that, again, this uh, baddie will build the one card. So we remove this momentarily, we display that, we give him a new card in that spot, and he still blocks it. So there we go. The innkeeper says, when playing a critter, you may discard this, inke this in innkeeper blah, from your city to decrease the cost by three berries. Uh, okay, that's pretty good. That might be worth it for that king. Yes. All right, next up, I'm going to go ahead and send out one of my workers to this spot in the forest as I get three berries. So I am going to take three berries. And these are really cool bits. They're kind of like rubbery little uh, molds. They're, they're a little squishy. They're nice. All right, so I did that. And then I am going to... Um, this is common critters... Yeah, all right. I am going to build the king out here. The king costs six berries. I just took three. I am going to go ahead and get rid of that innkeeper so I can pay less for this. And the, in, the king here is a unique critter. He says at the end of the game, I'm going to get four victory points. I'm also going to get one for each basic event I've achieved and two for each special event I've achieved. Events. The four across the top, like I said, those are the basic, and the special ones are these, which change from game to game. They just require that I have specific things in front of me. So I will go ahead and do that. I'm going to build this, pay my three. When playing a critter, I can discard the innkeeper and reduce the cost. I will do so, put out my king, give back those berries. I'm going to replenish, and then he's going to build. Two gets him this. All right, I have a worker left. I've got no resources. What do I want? Uh, I have a lot of unique critters here, unfortunately. That's pretty good. Uh, that gets me any two resources I want. Uh, that gets me any two resources I want. Let me take a look at these uh, events. This one wants the inn, which I do have, and the bard. The bard is not out there. I am not holding it. Uh, I don't have either one of those. I don't have either one of those. And I don't have either one of those. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for that bard. That's going to be a good play for me. Uh, the Happy Loser, ladies and gentlemen, is in the house. How you doing, Dave? It's good to see you, pal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and send out my last critter here and get myself a twig and get myself a pebble. It's any two things, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go turn around and spend these to build the twig barge right here. Twig barge is a common construction, and it says gain two twigs. This happens as soon as I build it and also every time that the season changes uh, when it says it would trigger those kinds of buildings. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and build that right here. I know you can't see my buildings but um, right now I've still got my inn, I've got my school, the king I built and a twig barge. Uh, let me see if I do that. Maybe you can get a slightly better look at it as long as I don't confuse it with the, the rats stuff. So there we go. As soon as I do that, I get my two twigs, and I replenish, and then he builds. Eight. He gets that one. He's now got two cards of that type. All right. I've spent all my workers. I have two twigs left, though. Huh. Two twigs. 
is not gonna let me build anything out there right now I think I'm gonna be hanging on to those and I also want to look out for the bard and this lets me build the barge toad this lets me build a teacher who just went away shoot Ugh. missed out on that one barge toad is he out there he is not I don't have him I don't have any chains available to me right now so it looks like I'm gonna have to prepare for the next season all right so when I prepare for the next season uh, for summer I get a critter I take back my own and I am going to, as it says on the tree, draw two metal cards. Metal cards, I am going to take... Um, da, da, da. Which ones do I want? I can't take the one he's blocking. Uh -huh. Shepherd, chapel, don't have the chapel. Uh, that's pretty good. The general store there. I want some common critters because I will score for them. So I'm going to go ahead and take Chip Sweep here. Cute little dude who lets me activate one of those kinds of buildings. And I am going to take, I think, the crane right here. I replenish. And since I just switched from one season to the next, so will he. We're going to go ahead and check again what he does. So here's what he does for the next switch. He gets another guy. This one now blocks card two there. And these characters, this one moves from here to block this card. And this guy moves from here to block that spot. Let me double check that, make sure I got that right. Yes. And that's it. Back to me. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. Barge Toad did not show up. Teacher. No. What do I want to do? I can play a creator reconstruction for three fewer if I deploy a worker to the inn. Common Critter, Chip Sweep, Shop, da, 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 da. Ranger, the Wanderer with that. I can play Historian from the Clock Tower. That might be a good one. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send a worker out to the inn. I am going to play a construction for three fewer. I am going to build this one, the Clock Tower there. It says the cost is three twigs, one uh, pebble. I am going to pay one twig and the rest will be free for me. Do that. Pay this. And that one says, when played, place three coins here. All right. At the beginning of preparing for season, you may pay one coin from here to activate one basic or forest location where you have a worker deployed. All right. So if I already have a worker, I can boom, pay a coin and trigger that again. And... Upon building that, I am going to now have the ability to play the Historian as an upgrade chain for free. However, he first builds four. He takes that, and that is going to get him, no, not quite, but he's very close to getting one of those events at the top for free. All right, next up, I'll go ahead and build my Historian. Historian uh, comes into play, and he says, I draw one card after I play a critter or a construction. Very good. And I'll build for him. He gets card three. That's too bad, because that does give him an event when we switch from one season to the next. That's the bard. I'm looking for you. All right, bard, I'm going to send out a worker to get three berries here. And then I am going to build this bard card, the bard card. He takes three berries, put him into play, 
and he gives me an ability right away one time when I deploy him that's his kind of power okay the power is you may discard up to five cards to gain one victory point each and you know what I think I will do that uh, I don't care about most of this stuff maybe I'll keep this one but one two three four these are out and I get four victory points I'm gonna do that I'm gonna replenish and let him build four again he takes that there we go all right I still got a couple of workers here so I'm good got some points and I do have the inn and the bard now so I'm gonna send a worker out to that spot there completing this unique event unique event says performer in residence when achieved you may place up to three berries here um, and I got two victory points for each berry on this event well you know what never mind I'm not doing that right now let me get some berries first I just spent all my berries I can do that later I'm not competing with anyone so it's okay uh, all right what else can I do I've got Barge Toad here as a chain, the teacher. Uh, this is Undertaker, Barge Toad. No. Monastery Wanderer, don't have those. The Woodcarver and the Chapel, I don't have those. As far as my, my card types go, I don't have anything that's going to let me get one of the special ones. I do have two of these. So if I can get another one of this card type, I can achieve one of those special events at the top as well. And a courthouse is being blocked. That's one of them. So I think what I'll do is... I'm going to send a worker out to draw two cards right here and get any one resource. I'm going to make it a berry, and I'm going to draw two cards. I got a minor mole. There we go. And I got another one. Oh, shoot. Same card. Twice. All right, buddy. What am I doing? Got my last worker here. He's not going to be easy to deploy, unfortunately. I think I'm going to go out here get another berry, draw another card. Architect, look at this dude. All right, he is a unique critter. He says I'm gonna get one victory point for each unused resin and pebble to a maximum of six. And this is all end game scoring. That symbol is the kind of card that is end game scoring, okay? Uh, bah, 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 bah. All right, just checking comments and the like. I'm out of workers. I think I'm out of stuff that I want to do. I have one twig here. I don't have anything I can pay. The monk. Don't want to do that. General store. That's not going to help me out right now. So I am going to go ahead and change seasons. Upon doing that, I am going to retrieve my workers. I get two new ones. I get to activate all the buildings that have this symbol here. So those kinds of buildings and critters and anything is going to activate. And so I've got in front of me, uh, oh, I could have done the clock tower too. Mm. Hold up. Where was I? Uh, yeah, I think I will do that. I'm going to spend a coin here and activate something. It's either a force location. Which one do I want to do? I think I'll do this one. I, I know I was sitting on that card, so I'm going to draw two cards and gain another resource. I'm going to do that. All right, these aren't, these aren't really working out particularly well for me, but that's okay. And then I activate the twig barge, gets me 
two twigs. I activate, uh, well, nothing else. I don't have any more of those. That's it. And then he will change seasons. And he, when he changes seasons, is going to. He gets two new workers. They now cover cards three and four. He is going to move this one to cover up the one that has one berry and draw a card. And he is going to take this critter and place it over here. Now, in autumn, which is the season I just switched to, this down here is going to open up. And what that does is allow you to discard cards for straight up victory points. Uh, the, these three here, only a single worker can go to those. This one with the slightly bigger circle and it's open, I don't know if that's perceptible, but it is an open circle. As many uh, people as want to go there can do so. But he's blocking the three right now. All right. So it's back to me. Oh, and he should have, upon switching seasons, he checks if he qualifies for any of those up there and he'll take one. So he does, in fact, take this, which requires four of those uh, kinds of cards. He has them. So there you go, you jerk. All right, let's get some stuff built. Barge Toad, where are you? Did I draw you? No. Uh, teacher hasn't come up. I need to look for some chains here. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the in bard event now. Place a worker on there. I'm going to take this. This is mine now. I'll just leave it there, but turn it towards me. And I can put up to three berries on there. Each one's going to be worth two victory points at the end of the game. So we'll go ahead and load that up. I also definitely want to do this because at the end game scoring, um, every one of those special events I haven't acquired, I think he automatically acquires the baddie in the game. So I've got to do at least one or two of them if I can help it. All right, so first action was that. Let's see what else I can do here. Again, for right now, what I'm looking to hopefully find is some upgrade chains so that I can deploy some things for free. So for buildings, I've only got the clock tower here. I am going to need more cards. Don't want that. Farm. There's no farm out there. I do have a... Uh, the wife and there's a husband. No, he's not in play. Okay. I also, by the way, I haven't mentioned this because it really looks like it's not going to happen, but I do have a limit of 15 cards in my tableau, and someone says they want to see the resin up close. I'll show you all the things up close. There you go. That's what everything looks like. The little berry has a star on it. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Bits. Ooh. Oh, boy. What do I want to do? I definitely feel like I need more cards. Now that spot gets me two cards and a victory point, huh? That's interesting. This one gets me two cards and any one resource, which is probably ultimately better. But I don't know what I want, so I'll do that. Two cards and a victory point. Take the victory point. I'm going to draw two cards. I got a fool. Play this fool into an empty space in an opponent's city. Uh, okay, whatever. And then a farm. Farm is good. Farm translates to playing the wife for free. Maybe a husband if I can find one. 
because they can occupy the same space is how that works. So fantastic, I've got something now. I'm going to go ahead and send a worker out to my inn and deploy the farm for free. It takes uh, normally two twigs, one resin, but that will reduce the cost by three. So boom, that comes into play. I also gain one berry upon doing that. And then he will build. He rolled an eight. He gets this. And then I'll replenish it. Judge. Which plays from the courthouse. Uh, not in play. All right, so farm's done. I'm going to go ahead and use an upgrade chain on the farm to deploy the wife. She comes into play for free because, again, of the upgrade chain there from the bottom of one card, one construction, boom, I can play the critter. And upon doing that, again, he will build. He rolled the two. Give him that. I've got, eventually I do need to save one of these guys for this down here. I want to do that. No, no. That's pretty good. I did just play the wife. That gets me three. No, those are not the ones I need. Ugh. I need another one of these. Hmm. The berries are squishy. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are the worst. All right. Uh, I'm just thinking here out loud what I want to do. I definitely want more cards. Apparently, I just cannot seem to get the good ones. So I'll send another worker out to this spot. Two cards and any one resource. I will draw two cards. And I will take... Um, Resource, resource. What a resource do I want? Monk. Shepherd. Da, 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 da. It seems like berries is the way to go in this game for some reason. I do, I can get three berries right there very easily though. I'll take a pebble. <clears throat> There we go. And my new cards are a teacher. Fantastic. I've been looking for that. Yes. Uh, yes. And ruins, which says it's free to build the ruins. And it says discard a construction from your city, gain resources equal to that construction's cost, and draw two cards. Yeah. All right. And then the teacher I can build for free. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I have the school in play. I cover up that spot and I play the teacher for free. Upon playing the teacher, it says draw two cards, keep one, give the other to, your, to an opponent. Don't think I'd do that in the solitaire game. Uh, the bard, I've already got in play. School, I've already got in play. Don't care. Yeah, I think he gets this, but I don't think he builds it, so I just discard it. And I just built, so he builds. Seven. There you go. Hey, hey, the Wanderer. All right. I know I needed a... Uh... Oh, no, I don't have the card that lets me play him, but I thought I did. Nope, nope. I know he's one of the types of cards out here, the Wanderer and the Monastery. If I can get those two, I can complete that. But unfortunately, I don't have the monastery. The other ones are woodcarver and chapel. I don't have either. Undertaker, barge, toad, don't have either. However, the wanderer has a really good power that lets me draw three cards when I deploy him. And he go there we go. He comes from the lookout. That's the deal. All right, fantastic. I'll do that. I think I'm going to build the lookout. Hope that when this guy rolls, he does not take my uh, wanderer away. And then I'll build into that. As far as the lookout goes, I need, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the resin. 
that I need, but I will get it. Boop. All right, I'm going to go to that spot. I got one resin, one card. Okay. Yep. And then I am going to build a card. It takes one twig, one resin, one pebble to build the lookout. Right here. I'm going to show you that. It has a worker placement spot. It says copy any basic or forest location. Pretty cool. You don't have to fight for those spots. Build that. Replenish it. Roll. Not a seven, not a seven, not a seven, not a seven. Fantastic. It's a seven. Ha ha ha. What are the odds? Tell me, you mathematicians, what are the odds? Oh, you took my wanderer. Huh. All right. You know what? That's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. Let's see. What else? I want to accomplish. I have a single one of these left. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to use it down here to get a bunch of points. I think that's the best way to do this. I did not quite make any of the events at the top. No, uh, I just don't have the necessary things. I got one of that kind. Yeah. Yeah, no, not really. So I got a few resources here, or scarce resources. Barge toad. Wander from that. Don't have either one of those. And they are not out here. Nope. Any other spots out here that I can send workers to? Nope. And so with these resources, can I pay for anything? Uh, I don't think so, unfortunately. Though I could, but that's my last worker. All right, well, I'm going to do that. Discard five cards, one, two, three, four, five, and get five victory points. Three, four, five. And then I am going to pass, the final pass in the game, I'm pretty sure. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cards I got built. I can have uh, 15, like I said. Would be a maximum that you could build unless a card doesn't take a spot or they can share a spot, things like that. Uh, and that's that. So now we would do the scoring. So here's how scoring works. Mm -hmm, okay. Here's how scoring works. He is going to score Rugwart. Two points per card in his city. Three if it's a purple prosperity card. He gets three points for each basic event he achieved. He gets three points for each special event that I did not achieve. He gets three points for his worker on the journey, so this does count. And any point tokens that I gave him, which were none. All right. I am hearing an echo. Why am I hearing an echo? That's weird. <clears throat> Uh, someone's saying the odds were 1 in 8 because it's a D8. I don't know about that. That sounds like some... That sounds crazy. That sounds like some, some witchcraft. 1 in 8. Couldn't possibly be that simple. Uh, all right. So that's going to be his score. Let's figure out what his score is first, shall we? So he gets these three because I didn't complete them. And then I'm going to gather up his cards over here and his special event that he did get. So he is going to take three. Uh, each basic event. Yeah, let me do his cards first. So the purple ones, he got one of those, all right? So he is going to get 
Three for this one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 40 for that. Is that right? Let me double check. I'm not forgetting anything. Two per card, three for the special purple cards, three basic events, three special events that I didn't do, and that's it. So he's got, what did I say, 30? 30 or 40, I already forgot. My memory is not good. Uh, seriously, what did I say? 30 or 40? Just tell me in the comments. All right, I'm going to go ahead and score myself now. I am going to score. This is no special scoring. Let me go ahead and separate the purpley ones because they have an end game scoring. And I have three of them right here. 40, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm just scoring the number, the big number on the cards. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's just what's on the cards. 17. Then this is gets me some extra points if it's paired with the husband in the in the same spot, taking up in the same spot in the in the tableau. It's not. So 17. This one is one for every common critter in my city. Uh, there are 17, 18, uh, 19 for the teacher. This one gets me one for each basic event I achieved. Nope. And two for each special event I achieved. So that's two. 19, 20, 21. 21. Then I've got on top of that this here, which is another six for 27. And then these points I've got right here in front of me. It, this isn't going to look good, I think. 27, 28, 29, 30, 33, 36, 37. I don't think I'm missing anything. Oh, of course I am. Hello. Ha <laughs> ha. 37, 42. Because I got these five points. So I did beat him. I got 42 to his 40. And uh, I actually forgot to count two points that were still sitting on the clock tower, so 44. 44 to his 40. In your face, creature! There you go. I just won, everybody. I actually already played this one time. Uh, solitaire mode I've played once before, a few days ago, like a week ago. And I lost. Just barely, though. Same deal, just barely. It was, you know, like 37 to 39, something like that. It was real close. So... I actually pulled that off this time, and I was actually not super thrilled with my card chains. I was, it, it felt like I wasn't quite getting them going. But that's basically it. Um, the, I guess my uh, special event gave me enough that, that I was able to pull ahead. He also was, and, oh, and I finished one of these this time, the, the special events here. Last time I played, I couldn't do any of the four, meaning he gets all four of them. This time he only got three. So that's a swing. That's a problem. So you definitely have to focus on that. But that's it for right now. I think we're going to go ahead and do some Q&A here. I'll clean up while I chat with you a little bit. Um, you can do me a favor there and switch me up. Kenneth. Hi. Uh... All right, cool. So that is solitaire mode for Everdell. It was actually pretty short. That took me about, oh, I said it would be about 45 minutes. So yeah, that was about 45 minutes. But let's go ahead and chat about it then. If you want to give me any questions, anything like that, I will say I like the solitaire mode in this a lot because of two things. It's not a pain to do a lot of upkeep. Upkeep happens uh, three times in the game, basically, when I have to move around his critters and add a couple more onto the board. Other than that, and rolling the die, I can just play. So that's one thing. Upkeep is uh, minimal. And the second reason why I really like it is because it still feels 
like the regular game for the most part you know some of the buildings say you're supposed to give things to your opponents some of them are open buildings where your opponent could deploy a worker you would treat that differently if there was another person there playing but uh for the most part it feels just like you like it would when you're playing with a real person you know Uh, so Matt has a question here. Don't the solo rules say you play like three times? Indeed they do, sir. Uh, so here's how this works. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so. Um, you play against Brugwart and his pack of rowdy, rambunctious rat ruffians. <laughs> Alliteration. He will be returning to Everdell for three years in a row, each time bearing a new title of nastiness. You must find a way to overcome his dastardly tricks and trick uh, and rid Everdell of his filth once and for all. So yes, you play three times. Uh, the first time is what you just saw. Second time, it says year two. Same rules as year one with these additional rules. Place his worker on the four point journey space instead of the three, that's at the end of the game. And then he gains six points for every special event that you did not achieve instead of three that's a lot you got to get good for that one and then it gets worse for year three same rules as year two with these additional rules you place his worker on the five point journey space instead of the four and when he prepares for uh, autumn the last time yeah he does it then he kidnaps one of your workers you do not move his worker to the one berry and one card space instead you remove that worker and one of your workers from the game so he'll only have, uh, now you'll only have five workers for that last season. If you beat him in year three and the bards, uh, beat him in year three and the bards of Everdell sing of your triumph. The historian records your victory to be preserved and remembered for all time. <laughs> so yes, technically you play three times. I've, the last time I played, I played year one and I lost. I was like, well, okay, it's basically just difficulty modes i don't think they i don't think they mean for you to play three times in a row that would probably be a little long as it is right now 45 minutes or so it's perfect shuffle up set out a few bits and you're good to go uh if i play this again and i beat it i might try that level two that year two but as it is i barely won so i don't know if i want to mess with this big old rat again all right Are the resin the same shape as the ones in Century Golem or Quartz? Boy, uh, yes, I think they look like those standard crystal bits that you find in a lot of these games that include them. Uh, so here, let's take a look at these. Come on, focus up. There you go. So this is what they look like. They got that general... Yeah, they look pretty standard. I don't think these are unique to this game. They look like they always do in the kind of games that have these gems. Now, again, I don't remember if those games have exactly the same shape. I want to say that I think they do. But other than that, yeah, yeah. The only issue with the, with the bits in this game are the twigs, I would say, because they are cylindrical. They're, they, they are perfectly cylindrical, as you can see there. So they will roll around on the table. They look good. And they're very nicely made, but they, they tend to roll a little bit. The pebbles are fantastic. They're shiny. They have a nice, uh, pretty unique shape to them. They're kind of squished. They look like a, a little bit like a pill or something. And then the berries, which are definitely my favorite because they have a completely different material, a different finish. They are rubbery, and they are squishy a little bit. Oh, come on. There you go. They have a star right there on the top, as you can see. So those are the berries. Those are all the bits. And then, of course, the critter. You're going to get your little dudes there, and you're going to get... Um, what else is there? Uh, the coins, as I said, do not do not come in the normal version. You're going to get cardboard coins. But they're, they're very nice as well. And uh, you don't handle these a lot. You take them... And just put them in front of you in a pile so you know this is the kind of upgrade coin that if you're not manipulating it as money and it's not money it's victory points then i would i wouldn't worry about it as much you know i love my metal coins when i am uh, manipulating that money when it's actual money yeah i love it but if it's just a 
scorekeeping device, eh, it's not so bad. Cardboard would be just fine. All right. <clears throat> Can you switch me back? There we go. Uh, all right, let's see. I thought you were just, uh, that was just stepping up the difficulty until you've conquered the game. Yeah, that's basically what I think as well. You're just playing multiple times. Someone says, yeah, the twigs roll way too much. Yeah, I agree with that. I, um, especially if you put them all in that pile, you know, and they, they get away a little bit from you. They're, I haven't had too much of a problem, but they do roll. Matt says, the coins were super nice, but kind of sad you don't use them very much. Yeah, like I said, they're, um, you're going to end up with a few maybe in the game, but they're not really an integral part uh, of the, you know, of every turn in the game or anything. They're not money. You don't gain it and spend it and gain it. They're just a way to keep score. All right, any other questions, everybody? This game, I would say, mainly reminds me of two other games. So it makes me think of Imperial Settlers, i.e. 51st State. Those are very similar. Um, because of the, the construction chains a little bit. That's partly, you know, it kind of makes me think of that a little bit. And it, it's kind of like Seven Wonders that way, too, where, you know, if you had built something previously, well, the next one's free for you. But the tableau building, you know, building a bunch of stuff in front of you, kind of makes me think of uh, Imperial Settlers in some ways, which I really like. It's one of my favorite games. The other thing it makes me think of is uh, one that I really enjoy, but I think it's largely unappreciated or, or underappreciated, I'll say, and that is Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark has a very similar vibe to this in, in one way. That is that it's both a card management kind of tableau building game which you're using your car is to uh, affect change and a worker placement game I haven't seen a lot of games that tackle both in which you can take a worker placement action or not because there's other types of actions usually when it's a worker placement game on your turn you place a worker or you take them back or you move one whatever but it's like it's about worker placement. In this game, I could have several turns in a row where a worker doesn't go out or come back to me because there's this other half of the game that has to do with just the cards. Uh, someone say, I played the, I only played this game once, but it felt like the game only became fun in the last phase. Um... I don't feel that way. I enjoy it. That, that first one sure is sure is quick, though. The the first one with you have two workers, you're gonna maybe get out a card or two, and then boom, change a uh, change a season. If you can get it, you know, if you can time it right, then you can build these cards that will trigger at the end of that first season and get something out of it. So I think the game is definitely telling you to do that. You know, like play out these that give you whatever they give you right away and then when you change season again and worry about the big scoring cards later in the game but in this game I mean, you're going to play whatever you can play their luck is certainly a factor if you don't have the car you would like to play then you, you're not going to play uh, someone's asking what has the better theme this or root unfortunately i have not played root so I couldn't tell you. I really like the theme in this. Root also looks adorable. It looks like a very nice theme, but I haven't played it. I like the, the world building in this. Seems very thorough, though. I don't know if they, how much they tackled that in Root. But in this, it's, it's everywhere. They really took trouble to kind of build up their little existence here. In fact, the rule book has a lot of just sort of fluff in it um, with... Uh, there's literally a poem at the beginning right here on that opening page is a poem just no good reason for that there is one and then you've got at the end you've got uh, a short story from one of the characters in in this world so there's that they also give you a lot of um, 
throughout the rule book, they give you a lot of sort of just flavor building things. Things like a letter from uh, the husband to the wife, mouse, and then she answers him in a different letter on, on the other page there. Stuff like that. So there's a, there's a nice amount of world building that went into it. So Benjamin says, in the first season, you can get way more than one or two cards. I once got five out. Benjamin is a beast and clearly a better game than me. Uh, all right, let's see. Me and my wife, we love seasons. Is this better or worse? Uh, boy, that's, I don't know. I like it better, but I'm sure that's not true of everybody. I'm not... A particularly big fan of Seasons, though. I don't know why, even. I, it's just a game that I never quite... I enjoyed it. I played it, enjoyed it. Never thought about it, really. It's not one I ever acquired. It's not one that I wouldn't pass up on playing it. But it's just not in the forefront of my mind. One that never made it into my collection. Uh, where is your tree? It is uh, set aside, but I can show it to you if you want. So here's what the tree looks like. Again, this is a little bit of a pain. But this is the tree. So let me see if I can build it up here. All right, so for the tree, we're going to take all this. We're going to build this up. And we are going to do that and that. So we do that. Then we're going to take the big one here and we're going to slide that into the entire structure. I'm going to put this right here so you can see what's going on. Uh huh. And so I need to make sure that that goes past that and goes through those, keeps going past these, because it needs to rest down there. And then this one goes through these, it has to, this is tricky, you're supposed to like, it doesn't quite go around, so I always have to do this under one side, and then actually keep going. And it is going to sit there, like so. This is what the tree looks like. The idea is you put this where the stomp is, uh, the stump is on the board, and you are going to put, uh, let's see, move this a little bit. There we go. You are going to put the deck of cards here you are going to put the special events. There are four of these, I completed one of them. Where'd my other ones go? I don't know. Those are gonna go here. So one there, and where did they go? Oh, here we go. So you're gonna put these out like so. Again, doesn't really matter. This could go on the board. And then, and this part is nice, you are going to put your critters up here. And so each player would put out one there, one in the middle, like so, and then two over here, like so. That's what the tree looks like. It's got the nice reminder up here, holds these, kind of holds the deck in there. It's, um, I like this part. I like the top. This is whatever. And then the deck being tucked in there is fine. It won't spill and the like. So that's good. The only thing I don't like about the tree is if you're sitting with four players around the table and someone is sitting opposite where I was, this is what you get. Um, not as good. Not as useful. <laughs> so there you go. That's what the tree looks like. <laughs> Impromptu component dump. Tom would be so proud of me. 
All right, let's switch me back up here, Kenny. Uh, all right, let's see, what do we got? How does this compare to photosynthesis? Oh boy, I don't know, those are pretty different. I don't think they feel the same at all. I like this a little bit better than photosynthesis, but that's a very clever game. That one's also less, um, there's less, less text and combinations, like this card leads to this card. This one lets me play this card for free. There's less complications, fewer complications maybe? Uh, they have a wooden tree for sale. Really, I have not seen that, so I don't know anything about it. Where am I supposed to store it? This one already doesn't fit in the box, so I would have to look at that and see what that looks like. I have no idea. All right. Andrew says, it never ceases to amaze me how popular this game is simply because of the art. I guess my tastes are shifting to heavier games. Yeah, that could be. Um, I, I would say it's definitely popular in part because of the art. Uh, I was captivated and interested in playing it because of the art and because of the theme, 100%. But then, upon playing it, I did enjoy it. Again, it reminds me of games I already enjoyed, like uh, Lewis and Clark and Imperial Settlers. It's got a similar, similar vibe, you know. So, I like those. Jason says, wow, assembling that was way more involved than I thought. Yeah, a little bit, which is was one of the main complaints I've heard, is the fact that you have to build it up, put it on the table every time you want to play. When you're done, you have to take it apart, because it won't fit back in the box built up. And you probably wouldn't want to do that anyway. It might get damaged. But, uh, yeah, so I know some people, after they've played a few times, sort of give up on building it. If they all know how the game works, you don't really need to do it anymore. It looks good on the table, as long as you're playing with a lower player count. But uh, I could definitely see not building it up sometimes if I'm not feeling like going through the trouble. All right, everybody, anything else? Because I'm getting ready to wrap it up. I do want to say thanks. Um, oh, here's one question. What's the ideal player count? I don't know. For me, too. It's uh, my turns come around quicker. I don't have to, but, but, you know, I think the same thing about 51st State. I think the same thing about Imperial Settlers. Most of those games, unless they have drafting. Oh, I definitely think the same thing about uh, Lewis and Clark, by the way. Uh, big time. That one scales up way too much. The time scaling is like 30 minutes per player. So, yes. Anyway. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for tuning in and checking this out with me. I really appreciate it, everybody. Um, I will be back at some point and do another live solitaire playthrough of something. You know, if you have an idea of something you think you'd like uh, uh, to check out while I play solitaire, send me a tweet. Follow me on Twitter if you don't. That's Z E E underscore Garcia. Uh, so check me out there. Again, if you have an idea for something that has a solitaire mode and you think would go over well, you want to check, uh, check that out, send me a tweet. Tweet at me. Lewis and Clark at 5 was painful. I played at 4, and that was like pulling teeth. So at 5, <laughs> I, I am sorry. I feel bad for you. What might be the next solo game that you play? I have no idea. So uh, you guys let me know. You know, if there's something that I should be playing solitaire live, let me know. Because I don't know. I don't know yet. All right, everyone. That's it. Y'all have a good day. Thanks again for checking this out. I'm Z Garcia. You have been watching the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower.
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at Cool Stuff, Inc.